who is going to be challenging for the Po Grand Prix trophy later this afternoon. We've got the music, we've got the sights, we've got the sounds, we've got the incredible style of the Po Grand Prix. It is one of the most incredible events in the motorsport calendar. And if we, we thought it was going to be a good one yesterday, it's definitely going to be fever pitch today. That man, Lando Norris, starts on pole position, not only for race two, but for race three later on as well. After an epic qualifying session yesterday, Lando really put in an amazing stream of laps, and that's what's put him on the top of the grid. He's going to be lining up alongside Maxi Gunter, the luckiest man in Poe, who despite a donut in yesterday's race, after he was tipped into a spin by the uh, faltering Jake Dennis's car, he will put himself on the front row of the grid after another strong performance in qualifying. And Maxi Gunter was already looking very feisty yesterday. He has a good chance here of getting himself among the winners. For the first time in 2017, of course, fourth in the championship this weekend, Maxi Gunter. And he wants to make sure he can get himself on the top step of the podium in at least one of the three races here this afternoon. And it could be his moment. Third on the grid, hoping to redeem himself after yesterday's trip to the barriers on the first lap of the first race. Callum Illett is now on uh, the second row of the starting grid, P3. But as I said to him yesterday, that's where Joel Erickson won from yesterday. He gave me a big grin and said, well, yeah, that was my fault, wasn't it? But Callum Illett is definitely getting himself geared up and ready for race action. And he said, yesterday is forgotten. Today is a brand new day. And Callum is looking forward to the challenge from third position. Joel Eriksson lines up on P4 on the starting grid. He was second in the uh, group yesterday for qualifying. They split the grids into uh, they split the grid into two groups of qualifying here. First, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth in the championship standings go out in one group, and then second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, etc. go out in the second group. And it was Lando Norris that set the fastest lap of all. So his group starts on the odd side of the grid, and Maxi Gunter was fastest in his group. So they start on the even side of the grid. Joel Eriksson pipped to first position in his group by just a tenth of a second by Maxi Gunter, so he lines up in fourth on the grid. If any of that made any sense to anybody, I clearly wasn't telling it right, but I absolutely love that qualifying system, and I do think there are several championships in the world of motorsport that should employ it. It really makes for great grids. Uh, yesterday was a strong one for a few drivers, but Rolf Aaron has definitely got himself into a good position. There is Ralph Aaron getting himself ready from fifth on the grid, the Estonian, and he looks really strong in this uh, latter part of the week. Weekend. I would not be surprised at all to see Ralph Aaron on the podium. He really seems to have hit a sweet spot. He had problems in first qualifying, and he said, I'm coming back stronger, and he definitely proved it in yesterday's qualifying session, and he's really happy with the third row of the grid. I think he can go even further than that. Just alongside him was the man he fought with for position yesterday, Nikita Mazepin, the Russian, who, of course, has been in and out of the Force India fold uh, for the last uh, few seasons. And uh, he is uh, still there looking good for a chance to move into the Formula One grid one day. The high-tech GP driver, Nikita Mazepin, hoping for a really strong race here today, as he had yesterday, battling away with Ralph Aaron for the entirety of. Several drivers out of position for this one. Harrison Newey starts seventh. Jake Hughes hoping to redeem himself after his little uh, skirmish with the barriers that ended his race yesterday in eighth position on the starting grid. Ferdinand Habsburg lines up alongside Jake Dennis after Jake's trip to the barriers uh, yesterday as well. That was such a weird incident as well at Park Beaumont yesterday. Both he and Joey Mawson going head on into the barriers on the uh, flat out right hander, just uh, touching uh, a wet patch and it got very slippery. There is Harrison Newey, the man for Van Amersfoort Racing, hoping that this is going to be another strong weekend for him, pushing his way towards the top six, he hopes, as the team wish him good luck. He's had a good weekend uh, at Poe, but he would like it to be a lot better. So he's hoping that this is the race that turns it round for him. So Harrison Newey lining up alongside his fellow Brit. Jake Hughes, and that is the kind of view we have been treated to all weekend here, right in the heart of the Pyrenees, this place. It's an amazing backdrop, one of the most picturesque circuits in the world, the Pau Grand Prix Street Circuit. And I have to say, it is very difficult not to fall in love with this place. We toured the, uh, uh, myself and my colleagues, we toured the streets uh, yesterday night as uh, some of the sports car races were happening, and uh, it just is a beautiful city. I have to say, if I couldn't, if I had to live in France, and if I could choose to live anywhere, I think I'd live here all year round, never mind for the Grand Prix weekend. There's Jake Hughes getting himself ready for the action in P8 on the grid. Uh, Ferdinand Habsburg and Jake Dennis will start just behind him. Jahan Darawala and Joey Mawson struggled in yesterday's qualifying after problematic races yesterday as well. Uh, Jahan Darawala was just getting up to speed in qualifying yesterday and then hit the barriers. So his uh, qualifying session came to an end with a crumpled car in the wall. Uh, Joey Mawson had to recover after his big accident in the race yesterday while he was running in P3. 
And Mawson now starts from 12th position on the grid. He's not particularly happy with it. Uh, Tadasuke Makino very much improved uh, yesterday in qualifying. He's got himself a good chance of a top 10 finish now, the Japanese star who lives in uh, London, England. Uh, he is going to be uh, running well for that 13th position as we look at Ferdinand Habsburg, the man for Carlin. Looking uh, very strong indeed, the Austrian who lives uh, partly in uh, London, partly in Vienna. But it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, Ferdinand Habsburg actually is celebrating his birthday today as well. He's 20 today. The man who has been racing in the Toyota Racing Series, Euro Formula Open runner-up last year, and Formula Renault for the last three years. But uh, today he turns 20 and will want to repeat his podium from Monza earlier this season in uh, Formula 3 Europe to get himself back on the rostrum. But from ninth position, that is going to be tricky. But then... This is Poe, so don't underestimate it. Here's Jake Dennis, hoping to redeem himself in what is his penultimate race in FIA Formula 3 Europe. His 74th start in the championship here today, and he's wanting to stay out of the barriers, if he can possibly help it. This time, after following Joey Mawson in yesterday, very, very tricky conditions. All you do is hit one white line, and that's it. You're on a one-way collision course with the barriers, especially in greasy conditions. Hopefully, we haven't got that today. Uh, alongside Tadasuke Makino is Mick Schumacher, the man who's had so much attention poured upon him from the fans this weekend. Uh, desperate to get a look at the number 25. He's done okay. He's not particularly happy with the pace he's had. And uh, yesterday's qualifying session was a little bit stronger, to be fair. But he likes the circuit, as many drivers do, in fact. So uh, he's kind of hoping that things will improve as the day goes on, but uh, it's not looking too hopeful for Mick Schumacher from row seven on the grid. Another man who's got uh, family backing in motor racing is just behind him, Pedro Piquet. He starts from 15th on the grid in the number five. Pedro Piquet, the Brazilian from uh, the capital city of Brasilia and the Van Amersfoort Racing Delara Mercedes. He's the runner-up, of course, in the 2017 Toyota Racing Series, and he was in F4 in Italy and Germany over the last couple of seasons. Uh, so he will now start from 15th on the starting grid alongside another man who has struggled since his accident in race one. Yesterday, uh, the Chinese driver, Guan Yu Zhou, who, of course, is based nowadays at Maranello in Italy, as he's one of the Ferrari Academy drivers. He starts 16th on the grid in front of David Beckman. A minute motor. They don't say start your engines in France. They say motor, switch it on, and we're getting ready to go. David Beckman alongside Kevin Andres on the uh, eighth row, uh, sorry, the ninth row of the starting grid. David Beckman in the Van Amersfoort racing machine and uh, Kevin Andres in the motor park car. He's uh, the only driver in the grid, actually, Kevin Andres, who hasn't come through the traditional route. He's been, uh, he's a German based in America but prior to this season, and he's come up through the likes of the Atlantic, Atlantic Series, USF 2000s. He was the Skip Barber champion in 2014 as well. Uh, Marino Sato is the last man in on the grid in the number 33, the motor park driver, having been in Italian F4 the last two seasons and karting before that, yet to score this year. He starts 19th on the starting grid. So the drivers are about to go around this beautiful, picturesque Poe Grand Prix circuit. If you've never seen this place before, you're in for a treat. Even on this rolling lap, it is absolutely picturesque. As the green flag waves and the drivers will now head off on the Avenue Gaston Lacoste around the circuit for their first rolling lap of the day. So, is this going to be about Joel Eriksson fighting his way through to the front once again, or will Lando Norris get out in front and disappear? It's going to be interesting. Here is the grid. Lando Norris from Maxi Gunter on the front row of the grid. Callum Illett and Joel Eriksson on the second row. Ralph Aaron and Nikita Mazepin are on the third, with Harrison Newey and Jake Hughes starting on row four from Ferdinand Habsburg and Jake Dennis. Row six is Johan Dabrowala alongside Joey Mawson, the Australian, both of whom are hoping to redeem themselves after a disappointing day yesterday. Tadasuke Makino and Mick Schumacher share the seventh throw of the grid. Uh, Pedro Piquet lines up alongside Guan Yu Zhou, David Beckman, Kevin Andres, and Marino Sato are next up in the mix. So it's going to be an interesting one, this, as the drivers make their way out of the Lagar corner, uh, station hairpin, and up the Avenue Lyon C, where we had uh, some interesting battles in the early stages. Now, yesterday, uh, they called a yellow flag proceedings at the second corner at Pont Oscar, uh, where we had a very interesting couple of incidents in the uh, night race last night in the Clio Cup. There was a lot of oil put down there. It's been treated overnight, so has the barriers. They got uh, damaged last night. They've, they've been repaired, so hopefully we should be all okay and ready and cooking for the race. We're now dropping down through the Fosh chicane. This is where both Callum Illett and uh, uh, Guan Yu Zhou lost it yesterday. So hopefully everybody's going to stay out of the barriers this time for the FIA Formula 3 European Championship, supported by Hankook Performance Tyres. The second race on the streets of Po, ready to go. And it is an absolutely incredible circuit, as you see. They drop through the Buisson hairpin at this point, through the left flick, and then a quick right following it down towards the very tight chicane. I'm actually surprised there haven't been as many incidents through this part of the course as uh, 
uh, expected there would be. Most of the trouble in previous years, a lot of it has come from this part of the course, but everybody's been treating this part of the uh, section, the last uh, couple of corners, with a lot of respect this weekend, and everybody's been very smooth through here. Once you leave the chicane, you get flat on the throttle through the right and left kinks, uh, through the left and right kinks, I should say. That's what happens first. And they come back onto the Avenue Gaston Lacoste. I drove the circuit here on Friday night when they opened up the roads to the public. And it is an absolutely incredible circuit. The television just doesn't give you a proper perspective as to what this circuit is actually like in terms of camber change, in terms of dynamic opening apexes. It's an amazing motor racing circuit and one that is definitely deserving of a jewel in the crown in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. So Lando Norris from the front of the grid, alongside him Maxi Gunter, Callum Miller, Joel Erickson, Ralph Aaron, Nikita Mazepin, Harrison Newey, Jake Hughes, then it's Habsburg, Dennis, Darawala, May, uh, Mawson, Makino, Schumacher, Piquet, Joe, Beckman, Andres, and Sato. The green flag waves at the back of the grid. We're getting ourselves ready to go with the lights on here at the Poe Grand Prix. Wait for it. Now, great start, we're racing up Poe, and Lando Norris gets a good start, but Maxi Kunter's got a better one. Maxi Kunter's going to get the lead as they go through the first flick, down towards the car. Absolutely brilliant gets away from Maxi Kunter, and he's going to take the lead as they swarm into the first corner for the first time, and that's Mick Schumacher trying to make up a couple of moves. So Maxi Kunter gets the best start, Lando Norris in second, and in third position, that is the 53 of Callum Illett. So everybody's got away cleanly through the station hairpin as they go through Pon Oscar for the first time. Yellow flags once again on the first lap only as they slot themselves into position but Maxi Gunter leads here. Lando Norris in second from Callum Illett in third and that looks to me like Joel Eriksson is still there in P4. So a cracking start as they make their way through past the casino and round to Park Beaumont. Now, in a couple of corners' time is the moment where Callum Illett lost it yesterday. Lando Norris is already giving Maxi Gunter an incredible run for his money as they drop through the Faux Chicane. Keep it on the back stuff this time, guys. And this time, Callum Illett does not drop it into the barriers. Is anybody else going to? Hopefully not as they drop through the right-hand hairpin, through Buisson, and down towards the chicane, through the left, through the right. And Maxi Gunter and Lando Norris are already starting to stretch out a lead over Callum Illett as they work their way through the chicane. Lando Norris determined to get this lead back. Down the drop and back onto the Avenue Gaston Lacoste. But Maxi Gunter leads the way. Lando Norris in second. And it looks to me as though everybody's got to throw on the first lap. Lando Norris sizing up an opportunity to go for Maxi Gunter. Gunter defends on the inside line. Lando Norris is trying to come right around the outside and then get the, get the switch back on the undercut. Now this lap, he won't have a yellow flag to deal with. If he can get a good run and sling it up the inside, he might have a chance. But Maxi Gunter is sending him to the outside line. Lando's keeping it there. That's incredibly brave from Norris and he has to back out of it. Goodness me, Lando Norris is giving it gusto on the second lap here at Poe. And Maxi Gunter's gone wide. Norris can get a good sprint out of the turn. They lock wheels. They actually bang wheels there as Lando Norris stays to the right of him. Oh my goodness, he can't hold that. He nearly goes into the barriers. Lando Norris keeps the car on the road. This is an incredible, aggressive, dynamic attack from Lando Norris. This is such bravery from the young Brit. 17 years old, don't forget Lando Norris going up against the man who was the runner-up in last year's championship. So Lando slots back in a second position. That was so nearly an early trip to the barriers for Lando Norris, but he realized what was happening. He caught the car, caught the slide, and he is still in the battle. This is amazing. Callum Illett in third position, Joel Eriksson fourth, Harrison Newey is up to fifth, an incredible start from him with Ralph Aaron, Jake Hughes and Nikita Mazepin following behind, Habsburg is ninth, Jake Dennis is in tenth position from Darawala, Mawson, Schumacher, Makino, P.K. Joe, Beckman, Andres and Sato and everybody is still going on the first the couple of laps of this race. Now here's Joel Eriksson, number one, P4, stuck behind Callum Miller to the moment, trying to find a way through. Lando Norris still hustling Maxi Gunter, trying to make his way past, and still giving him aggro as Callum Miller has to defend from Joel Eriksson. They come out of the hairpin, up at the top of the hill at the Lise. Absolutely amazing, through Casino. And this is another good chance for Lando Norris. He comes back at Maxi Gunter once more. You get the impression he really, really is uh, feeling the pinch from losing the lead. And as they drop through the first chicane, once again, this is Lando Norris pushing hard. In terms of qualifying yesterday, he was four tenths of a second quicker than Maxi Gunter. But because Gunter was fastest in his group, he joins him on the front row of the grid alongside Lando Norris. And that start has completely transformed this race as Maxi Gunter now leads in front of Lando Norris. Lando desperately trying to get back through. Callum Millet still third in front of Ericsson. Fifth is Harrison Newey. Ralph Aaron in sixth position for Estonia. Seventh is Hughes. Mazepin, Habsburg, Jake Dennis. 
fastest lap of the race. Lando Norris has just done a 1.11.09, trying to get closer to Maxi Gunter, trying to give him a real run for his money. He's got him in the slipstream. Surely he can't make a lunge into Paul Oscar this time. They come up the avenue, Lyonse, and Maxi Gunter shutting the door on Lando Norris. There's not a lot of opportunities to overtake, but if anybody's going to exploit them and find a place, it's going to be Lando Norris. He's so feisty in the early part of this season. Don't forget, he's won two races this year already as a rookie driver. He won at Silverstone, he won at Monza, and he's hoping to win at Poe. But he starts from pole position later on as well, so he just wants to get as many points on the board and take advantage of the fact that Joel Eriksson is down in P4. If he can overtake uh, Maxi Gunter and win this race, Joel Eriksson is only P4, so he will take the lead of the Drivers' Championship if he can get this done, and that's what he's focusing on. So Lando Norris still pushing Maxi Gunter, although those last couple of attempts have dropped him back a little bit. Maybe he's just trying to come back from a little further behind Maxi Gunter to have another go at it. Callum Millett, Joel Eriksson, Harrison Newey and Rolf Aaron are much closer together than they were. So Ralf Aaron pushing on in sixth position, trying to close up on uh, Harrison Newey. He's got rid of Nikita Mazepin at the start, which is very good news for him. So here is the battle up front. Once again, Maxi Gunter and Lando Norris. Let's have a look at the uh, start again. This is how Maxi Gunter got into the lead. Lando Norris tried his best to sweep across to stop him coming through, but Maxi Gunter had the measure of Lando and got the inside line. Now, this is Norris's attempt upon Oscar, and they did rub wheels. Did you see that? Goodness me, that was so close. Lando Norris having a good go. Oh, and that's a big lunge up the inside. It's Johan Darawala, I think that is, trying to make the move on the inside of Jake Dennis. And that was from a long way back. I'm not sure if he managed to get the move done or not. But that was very close, and I would not at all be surprised if they rubbed wheels at that point. Now, Gunter has got Norris stepping up the attack again. And look, Lando Norris dropping back has already made a big impression. Maxi Gunter set the fastest lap that time by a 1.10.6. But in the first sector, Norris was a tenth of a second quicker. And in the purple sectors, Gunter does a 31.6. Norris does a 31.7. So they're evenly matched at the moment, these two. Lando Norris up behind Maxi Gunter. But look, Callum Illett's dropping Joel Eriksson as well. So this is very interesting. Gunter and Norris out in front. Ill at third. Ericsson, Newey and Ralph Aaron. That's your top six at present. JQ still trying to get away from uh, Nikita Mazepin with Habsburg, Dennis, Darawala and Mawson. So Darawala did have to back out of the move in the end. But Lando Norris sets a new fastest lap, a 1.10.031. Now here is the battle further back. This is Mick Schumacher defending from Tadasuke Makino. Schumacher holds the place at the moment as they come out of the Pont Oscar up towards Lise. And there's battles everywhere you look at the moment as defending again now, having had to go on the offensive. Now Makino is defending from the Brazilian Pedro Pique. And behind him is Guan Yu Zhou, the Chinese driver. So they continue to battle away for position as they go through Park Beaumont once again. This is where Joey Mawson and Jake Dennis went off the road in a big way yesterday and lost it. So far, the early signs of this second race are much cleaner. It's a much smoother race than yesterday. Not so much carnage and pandemonium. But they've still got another 26 minutes to endure of this incredible, phenomenal, unbelievable racetrack. They drop through the chicane at the end of the lap now as uh, Guan Yu Zhou is trying to get away from the German David Beckman. But Gunter and Norris still together. Norris goes purple in the final sector again to try and close up on Maxi Gunter. But from his point of view, second position is not a bad place to finish for the second race in a row. And that's good championship points compared to Joel Eriksson, who is in P4. So for that, uh, it's going to be eight points on the board, uh, 18 points on the board, sorry, for Lando Norris in second position. Eriksson will only come away with 12, so that will tighten up the battle and tighten up the gap again. So there is the battle. Maxi Gunter and Lando Norris battling away for the victory as they go through Park Beaumont. Past the Grand Prix, uh, past the Cafe de Grand Prix, I should say. Through the first chicane. And look, Lando Norris is right back on the tail of Maxi Gunter. They sweep round the Avenue de General Point Moreau and into the Buisson hairpin. Lando Norris, fastest man on the racetrack. 1-10-0-3-1. Pushing hard on the back of Maxi Gunter. Dropping through the chicane. Power on down the throttle. Down the straight, back onto the avenue, Gaston Lacoste. There's a sizable gap, though, between Maxi Gunter and Lando Norris because uh, Gunter is particularly strong in the middle sector. That's where he's quickest. A 31-6 on the last split compared to uh, Lando Norris, who did a 32 dead. So Maxi Gunter is really able to maximize the car in the middle sector of the lap here. Up towards the Pont Oscar once more. 
Maxi Gunter is just measuring his pace at the moment in front of Lando Norris. He doesn't need to work too hard here. He's got the racing line. He's got the position. As you can see, Norris has been quicker on the previous two laps, but that last time around, Maxi Gunter trying to get himself a bit more of a gap and trying to uh, ease the pressure on himself as they work their way through. An amazing circuit this. You can see that either side of the road, the pavement actually does come into play, and it's, it causes a real problems if you hit that at the wrong angle as the drivers all sweep through past the casino and through Park Beaumont once again. But it's Gunter from Norris, Illet, Ericsson, Newey, Aaron, Hughes, Mazapan, Habsburg, and Dennis is your top ten. We're watching the battle just outside the top ten at the moment. This is Joey Mawson. Uh, no, sorry, that is... Uh, <laughs> I apologise. That is Guan Yu Zhou and David Beckman. So this is the uh, tail end battle, trying to close up on Tadasuke Makino and Pedro Piquet. For Guan Yu Zhou and David Beckman getting away from Kevin Andres Suri and uh, Marino Sato further behind them. But it's settling into a nice rhythm. The drivers don't want to push it too hard here because they've got the third race later on to focus on, of course. So they've got to be very careful about that as Maxi Gunter sets a new fastest lap out front, a 109.855. And that pulls the gap between himself and Lando Norris out to nine tenths of a second. So Maxi Gunter has looked good all weekend. He's looked strong all weekend, but he hasn't looked dominant yet. And this race could well be his first victory of the 2017 season. He's got 23 minutes or so to go. So he's still got to keep working on the car. Don't forget, of course, that they've got to 33 minutes plus one lap to race around this circuit. We're only a third of the way through, so there's still plenty of time for things to change, and they can change pretty quickly here at Poe. The sunshine's coming back out, which is really good. The drivers did not want it to be cool and uh, damp conditions around here. It's very deadly, as we found out yesterday, particularly for Joey Mawson and Jake Dennis. So Maxi Gunter controlling the pace out front, and we're looking towards the back of the grid. That's Kevin Andres and Marino Sato as they battle away for position. Gunter is stretching out the gap again. He sets another new fastest lap, Maxi Gunter, at the head of the race. A 1 minute 9.7 now for Maxi Gunter. He's having a great race here. He stretched out the gap between himself and Lando Norris to a second. Now, interestingly, just trying to see if uh, there's uh, what sort of pace Lando Norris has done. He's done a 109.8, which is his previous best, but it's not faster than Maxi Gunter. So these two are stretching out the advantage out in front of the race. Callum Elliott is having to settle for third position at this moment in time. So Lando Norris again pushing hard on the back of Maxi Gunter, has pushing Maxi to find a, a space at an impossible position at an early point of the race, damaged his confidence. Is he just settling himself now for second position, waiting for the third race later? Every lap he runs behind Maxi Gunter, of course, he's learning more of the track. This is only, of course, Lando Norris's first visit. Oh, we got the yellow in Sector 2. So somebody's gone in Sector 2. Two of them have gone in Sector 2. That's Kevin Andres and Marino Sato. Whoops. Marino Sato trying to make the move on Kevin Andres, and Andres is not happy. So those two have gone in the second sector now. Is that going to be... Uh, race over for both of them, or can they get their cars going again? It's still yellow in the second sector. Is this going to cause a safety car? Could be interesting, especially if they can't get the cars moved. We're watching back to the front. That's Callum Millett and Joel Erickson. They're approaching the scene of this accident, of course. It didn't look like there was a lot of damage. Right, the green flag is out, so they have managed to get those cars cleared. That is good news. So uh, we come to the scene of that little moment, and uh, both cars are gone. <laughs> That's good. So uh, Andres and Sato continue on. But uh, Kevin Andres is obviously going to have a word with uh, Marino Sato later. What were you doing, buddy? You came from a billion miles back. That was never going to work, mate, was it? So those two continue further back in the pack. Joel Eriksson still trying to chase after Callum Illett. Joel Eriksson won the race yesterday, don't forget. Held off an incredible challenge from Lando Norris today. He's in P4, and that just shows you what happens when you get qualified not quite as perfect as the previous day. He was only third on the grid yesterday, but fourth on the grid today, and he's just not able to get anywhere. Now, uh, Race Control is having an investigation into Kevin Andres and Marino Sato's incident at the Lice, and I would bet my bottom dollar that Marino Sato is going to get, at the very least, a warning, if not possibly even a penalty. But when he's starting last in uh, the next race as well, what more of a penalty can you really give him? It's a bit like uh, beating a man around the ribs when he's already got a broken toe, to be perfectly honest with you. So through they come once again. And the race over the field is now going through the Avenue Lyon Say and up the top of the hill towards the Pont Oscar. Blind apex, this, under the bridge, and they sweep through. An absolutely incredible circuit, this, as, Jeva, as uh, Jahan Darawala closing up once again on Jake Dennis. Dennis makes a mistake into the hairpin, and Darawala's going to get the place. 
Wow, Jake Dennis rusty. That doesn't happen very often. So Jay Andara, uh, Jay Andara moving up into 10th position then taking the place off of Jake Dennis. Big mistake for Jake, at least it's not as big as yesterday's. But now the man right behind him is Joey Mawson as they drop through the uh, first chicane. Mick Schumacher is next in the line. Then it is uh, Tadasuke Makino, Pedro Piquet, Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, David Beckman is in there as well, and it's going to be quite a long wait to uh, find out what's happened with Kevin Andrews and uh, Marino Sato. Watch them as they come through the first chicane curbs. Lando Norris, look how much energy the car exacerbates as they hop over the curbs there. Callum Miller getting plenty of... Uh, air time as well as Joel Eriksson. Here are the leaders once again. Gunter in front of Norris by 1.6 seconds now. Lando Norris settling or Lando Norris just keeping it in reserve for race three. That's the big one. That's the one everybody wants to win. But Maxi Gunter can take his first win of the season here on the streets of Poe if he continues on this form. And uh, a lot of people have said in the press over the last few weeks, this is the year that Maxi Gunter has to win the Formula 3 European Championship. There's only a certain amount of time you can really have a go at this, of course. He was the runner-up in... Uh he was the runner-up last season. He was the Formula Masters runner-up in 2014. This is his third season in the uh, European Formula 3 Championship. And a lot of people are saying this is the year Maxi Gunter has to win the championship effectively. He has to give it gusto. And at the moment, he's fourth in the standings with Joel Eriksson, uh, uh, Lando Norris and Callum Millett all in front of him at present. Callum Millett is in front of Joel Eriksson at the moment, though. But Maxi Gunter controlling the pace of this race and doing so with very much verve and vigor. They come onto the straight once again. Gunter still leading from Lando Norris. Second, Callum Millett. Ericsson in fourth position. And in fifth is uh, Harrison Newey in front of Ralph Aaron. It's uh, quite calm and reserved at the moment here at the Poe Grand Prix. Drivers just trying to keep themselves in a good little rhythm at the moment. 17 minutes plus a lap still left. But it can all change very quickly here at Poe as we saw uh, yesterday. All it took was one little error. And we saw several drivers make one little error yesterday. Joel Eriksson, though, in the sunshine of Poe, chasing after Callum Miller, hoping to get himself back on the podium again. Exacerbates some of the damage done in qualifying yesterday. Not physical damage, but certainly championship standings damage. If he finishes where he is, he will score 12 points compared to Lando Norris, who will score 18. So he'll lose six to Lando Norris, and he's got an eight-point advantage. So going into the third race later, Joel Eriksson will be leading the championship by just two points. Now, the incident between uh, Kevin Andres and Marino Sato is going to be investigated after the race, they have just decided. And I think that's probably the best decision, basically. Both of them kept going. They haven't really lost time to each other. They lost time to the rest of the pack, but it's uh, pretty much stalemate between the two of them. I don't think Kevin Andres is going to be very happy now that he's on his own at the back of the field. But uh, that is not something that's going to be discussed now. It'll be discussed after the race. Now, Maxi Gunter continues to up his pace. He's just gone half a second quicker than Lando Norris on the last lap. And that increases the lead to 2.19 seconds. Has Lando Norris pushed the tyres a little bit too hard in the early stages? Is he struggling for grip now? Because that's a long way to fall off the back of Maxi Gunter. Maybe he has his own game plan if he's just keeping everything in reserve at the moment. Here's the battle between Guan Yu Zhou and David Beckman. Guan Yu Zhou, a very top tip for the future, in my opinion, the Chinese driver. This is only his second year in the Formula 3 European Championship, Guan Yu Zhou. He was the uh, Italian Formula 4 runner-up in 2015. He was a Super 1 Series champion just two years before that in the world of British national karting. He only just managed to pip the uh, BRDC Formula 3 driver, Ben Hingley, to the title that year, I do believe. So uh, Guan Yu Zhou, or as he was known in the British paddock in those days, Chinese Joe, having a great race here with the 55 of David Beckman. Working very hard, it has to be said, David Beckman, who receives uh, Red Bull backing on his journey through the world of uh, Formula 3. This is his second year in the championship as well, the 55. So let's see where the battles are around the circuit. Well, there's the five. That is Pedro Piquet trying to make an impression on Tadasuke Makino. We look back as David Beckman lines up a move on Guan Yu Zhou. He's really swarming all over the place as Guan Yu Zhou shuts the door big time to try and keep him back. That was very close. Now, it looks to me as though David Beckman absolutely determined and dogged to get his way past. But Guan Yu Zhou is not playing ball. So as they fly up once again, the Avenue Lyon say up to Pont d'Oscar. Very tricky corner, possibly the uh, second hardest corner on the whole circuit. I would say this is probably the toughest. The Lycée hairpin, it really is incredibly tight. It's probably uh, the best way to say it is it's the reverse of the... Uh, 
station hairpin at Monaco in every respect. Monaco drops downhill and goes along to the left-hander. Well, the, the Lise hairpin at Poe goes uphill and right. So it's a really tricky corner indeed as they drop through the first chicane. Careful, David, you almost lost the car completely there as he continues to pursue Guan Yu Zhou. Now, interestingly, Lando Norris is uh, about the same sort of pace as Maxi Gunter again. He's not prepared to lose any more time. The gap is 2.1 as they come across the line that last time by. Calamil is still there in third position in front of uh, Joel Eriksson, Harrison Newey and Ralph Aaron with Hughes, Mazepin, Habsburg, Darawala, Dennis and Mawson in the top 12. Mick Schumacher in front of this lot. There is the race leader, Maxi Gunter. And look, he's practically on his own with, Ka with uh, Calamil at a long distant memory behind these two. But Lando Norris is about two seconds back from Maxi Gunter, and he seems to be settling for it. Through Casino, through Park Beaumont. Imagine how this race could have transformed if Lando Norris had found his way past Maxi Gunter in that incredible move around the outside of the Casino. That is bravery of the highest degree from Lando Norris. I've seen some pretty incredible overtakes from him in the past, but that was one heck of an attempt. Out of the Buisson hairpin comes Maxi Gunter. 13 minutes to go, plus one lap, of course as they drop down onto the flat out uh, up the throttle section of the circuit back onto the avenue Gaston Lacoste and Maxi Gunter looks very good indeed for the victory here as into the pits comes Marino Sato so Marino Sato in the motor park machine has clearly had some kind of difficulty is that mechanical or is that uh, well it's not a penalty because one hasn't been issued so uh, I imagine that in contact with uh, Kevin Andres he's probably damaged his car and they may well decide as a result of that, well, you've caused your own grave there, really, I'm afraid. You've dug your own grave, and it's not going to be uh, uh, worth giving you another penalty because you're down at the back anyway. Now, interestingly, uh, Callum Illett has realized that Lando Norris is not catching Maxi Gunter. He's dropped Joel Eriksson, and now he's going to try and make up for the points lost yesterday to get back onto the toe of Lando Norris. He wants to take on Norris, so this is going to be an interesting battle as Ralph Aaron is doing likewise on the back of Harrison Newey in the Van Amersfoort car. So Ralph Aaron in his high-tech GP machine really starting to give him some pressure now the Estonian seventh in last year's European Championship here in Formula 3 he is the uh, Italian Formula 4 champion from 2015 of course Ralph Aaron very pleasant bloke spoke to him a lot over the course of the weekend very nice guy indeed and uh, fully motivated to go for the podium here at Poe and he's only two places uh, well two or three places away from it all it takes is a couple of drivers up the road to make a mistake. And at the moment, Callum Illett is starting to get into the uh, position to start lining up Lando Norris. He's not quite close enough yet, but he's definitely closer to Norris than Norris is to Gunter. So uh, Callum Illett may well be getting a bit of a resurgence uh, from being there in third position. Joel Eriksson is not really able to stay with the top three this time. There he is. And here's the battle for fifth position as Ralph Aaron gets onto the back of Harrison Newey in the 17. So into the Lise hairpin once again. Ralph Aaron trying to get on the throttle as early as he possibly can to get a little bit more of an advantage on Harrison Newey as they race through the casino. Back through Park Beaumont, past the Cafe de Grand Prix, and a little bit of a slide there from Ralph Aaron, a bit of a twitch. That's how easy these cars can snap away on this corner. It's incredibly uh, dynamic. And again, on the exit of the Faux Chicane, the car starts to snap. Ralph Aaron very quick to get back on the throttle and make sure that the car is not going to slew straight into the barriers. Really easy to lose the car around here. It's basically Monaco shrunk down this place, but it is an absolutely amazing venue for racing. And probably a lot of drivers might even tell you it's an even harder challenge because although you've got the wide open spaces of the start finish straight, everything else is incredibly tight and they're very, very compact. And here you've got the pavement to contend with. Monaco, you don't really have that so much. Here's the three, Maxi Gunter out in front, looking very strong indeed, leading this race, just cruising in the sunshine on a beautiful Sunday morning here at the Po Grand Prix circuit. With 10 minutes plus a lap to go, Maxi Gunter is looking very good indeed here for his first victory of the 2017 season. The man from Oberstdorf in Germany is looking incredibly strong. Through the first chicane, now into the pits has come Guan Yu Zhou. Guan Yu Zhou has come into the pits. Now it looks as though he's picked up damage somewhere. There is Guan Yu Zhou. Now I'm not entirely sure why the Prima driver is in the pits. His teammate's still leading the race, of course, but Guan Yu Zhou, the car is in. Now, I wonder, has that come from his little tussle earlier on? 
I'm not sure who it was he was battling. Well, he was battling earlier with David Beckman, but I didn't see any contact between them. As Guan Yu Zhou runs in the pits, there goes his teammate Maxi Gunter to continue to lead the race. But what happened to Guan Yu Zhou? It's going to be difficult to find out exactly what's caused this. But Guan Yu Zhou is in the pits. Maxi Gunter, his teammate, continues to lead here with Lando Norris in second, Callum Hillett in third, from Joel Erickson, Harrison Newey, and Ralph Aaron. Jake Hughes is in seventh from Nikita Mazepin, Ferdinand Habsburg, Jahan Darawala, Jake Dennis, and Joey Mawson. Now, Guan Yu Zhou was in 16th position, battling away with David Beckman, and Guan Yu Zhou's getting out of his car, I'm afraid to say. His race is over. He puts the steering wheel back into the car, and uh, that is it. Game over for Guan Yu Zhou. What a real shame for the Chinese star. And I would like to know why, to be perfectly honest. We're hoping hopefully we might be able to get to see a replay of it. Well, I'm not entirely sure. It's been picked up by the cameras, so uh, we'll have to double check on that one. But uh, for some reason, Guan Yu Zhou is out of the second race, and that's two retirements in as many starts here at Poe. That's uh, just a look back at uh, Guan Yu Zhou getting out of the car once again. Real disappointment, real disappointment for the uh, Maranello based racing driver. Born in Shanghai, of course, Guan Yu Zhou, but now races. Uh, from his, uh, well, races around the world, of course, but is based over at the Maranello City in Italy. But look at that gap that Maxi Gunter has been able to pull out on Lando Norris. It's opened up to 2.9 seconds now. Callum Hillard is only 1.8 behind uh, Lando Norris. So he's pushing very hard indeed to try and get close up on the man in second position. But this is Maxi Gunter's race to lose now out in front. Looking very strong from Norris in second, Illett in third from uh, Joel Eriksson, Harrison Newey and Ralph Aaron. Jake Hughes in seventh position still in front of Nikita Mazepin. And uh, in terms of lap time pace, uh, they are really struggling to gain any progress actually, although Jake Hughes' fastest lap, uh, well his last lap was actually quicker than Lando Norris's. So Jake Hughes actually going faster than Lando Norris at this moment in time. And to be fair to Jake, he's having a really strong uh, weekend, but not where he wants to be. Of course, Jake Hughes, very talented racing driver from the United Kingdom, of course. Jake Hughes, having been in GP3 last year, he was eighth in the championship. He was the uh, Formula Renault NEC runner-up in 2015. He was BRDCF4 champion in 2013. And uh, he started his days in the world of the Viral Art UK karting series, in those days known as Easy Kart. But Jake Hughes is uh, there in seventh position behind this man. Ralph Aaron trying to close him up. There is Jake Hughes in the background. You can see him there in the 34 as Ralph Aaron closes up once again on Harrison Newey. They're all trying to close in on Joel Erickson, who's not actually lapping that quickly at the moment. His last lap, Joel Erickson, was a 1.11.0 compared to Harrison Newey on a 1.10.9 and Ralph Aaron on a 1.10.7. So I think it's going to be an interesting one to see how these guys continue to close up on Joel Erickson. And of course, if these two close up, then Jake Hughes is going to tighten up as well. So we may have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a heated up end to this race. Could get a little bit exciting in the closing stages here. I'm not saying it isn't already, because just watching these cars around the Pope Grand Prix circuit is fascinating to behold. You can see every little twitch, every little snap sideways, and every little opposite lock, and uh, every inch of the steering comes so valuably around the circuit here at Pope. Back onto the straight as they come back onto the avenue Gaston Lacoste. Joel Eriksson, his pace is not good at the moment compared to the others around him. He's just done a 1.11.1. Same sort of pace as Newey and Ralph Aaron. Jake Hughes is quicker than all of them at the moment. He's just done the 1.11.0, so Jake Hughes is able to close up on these guys and tighten up the gap. Joel Eriksson in real danger of being caught by these three. And these three drivers are in an interesting enough position. They want to gain some big points here. So they are more likely to take a gamble than Joel Eriksson would in the same situation. Eriksson is thinking about championship points. He is the championship leader, of course, don't forget. Fourth position would be very good indeed for him, but if these guys are catching him, then uh, they're going to start to throw caution to the winds, and that means that Joel Eriksson is going to have to start pushing harder, and if the car doesn't have anything left, or the tyres don't have anything left, it's going to be very interesting. Yellow flags, yellow flags, somebody's gone up front. Yellow flags. Now, who is it that's gone? We've got yellow flags. Has somebody hit the wall? Yes. Who's hit the wall? Is that Joel Erickson? Is that Joel Erickson? I think it is. That is Joel Erickson. The championship leader has hit the wall. I don't believe it. Joel Erickson has thrown this race away in fourth position. 
trying to gain championship points, and I'm fairly sure that is at the Faux Chicane. Joel Eriksson, under pressure, has gone into the wall. Now, that is almost certainly going to bring this race under, well, if not a full-course yellow, a safety car. But Joel Eriksson has just hit the wall of the Faux Chicane. His race is over, and that promotes Newey to fourth, Ralph Aaron to fifth, and Jake Hughes to sixth. Yellow flags at the Parc Beaumont. And no surprises there. So, Maxi Gunter and Orlando Norris past the place where Joel Eriksson has gone off. I really want to see that again, if we've got an opportunity to see it. But Joel Eriksson has lost it at the Faux Chicane. And he's buried his car deep into the barriers. And I think it's on the outside of the corner, on the uh, second apex that his car has buried itself in the barriers. We're not going to get full course yellows. They've moved the car already, so it's green flags. And we're still racing. But Joel Eriksson is out of the race. Now, look at the gap that these three have managed to pull as a result of that accident. Harrison Newey is still in fourth position and looking good for what is said to be one of his best results of the year. But Harrison Newey is a long, long way back from Callum Hillen now as these three run out in front. But that is a shock. Winner yesterday, binner today. Joel Eriksson goes into the wall and out of the race from P4. And this is heaven sent for Lando Norris because, of course, he's running in second position. Joel Eriksson will score nothing in this race. And Lando Norris is set to score 18. The gap was eight points. It's now going to be 10 in Lando's favor. This is delightful news for Lando Norris. He couldn't care less he's not going to win this race now, especially if he's seen that Joel Eriksson is in the barrier. Maxi Gunter, three laps to go. And looking good in the lead of this race. He will be delighted if he can pick up the victory here. And it looks as though it's going to happen. But Lando Norris doesn't care about that right now. He's in second position and is about to take the lead of the championship back. He led it after the first race of the year, of course, because he won his maiden race in Formula 3 at uh, Silverstone. So this is going to be an amazing moment for Lando Norris in his championship campaign. There's Callum Illett, very much reinvigorated after his mistake in race one yesterday that put him into the barriers uh, halfway around the first lap while leading, but not today. Callum Illett's been much more reserved and much more composed, and he's there in third position looking for some strong points from this one, but he's going to gain points, of course, on Joel Eriksson, who's in the barriers. Oh, and that's Joey Mawson with uh, suspension damage. Big suspension damage at the rear, so Joey Mawson's gone into the barriers somewhere. So we need to see what happened to Joel Eriksson. We need to see what happened to Joey Mawson now. That's really interesting, but Joey Mawson has hit the wall somewhere and his race is over. And it looks to me as though he's the only one who's uh, been involved in an incident there. I really want to see a replay of that if we get an opportunity, but it's really tricky because we don't know where he's gone. There's Maxi Gunter, there's Lando Norris. And these two are going to continue their run to the flag. But Maxi Gunter looks really good. Looks really, really good here. Two laps to go. And Maxi Gunter looking like he's going to get the victory here in front of Lando Norris. It all looks ship shape in Bristol fashion from his point of view. And with one lap to go at the end of this one, Lando Norris is going to take the lead of the championship, and Maxi Gunter is going to win his first race of the 2017 season, provided he keeps it together. Lando Norris, incidentally, as a result of that yellow flag, has started pushing again. Maybe he thinks he can just get under Maxi Gunter's skin in the last lap and a half. Maybe I can intimidate him. Maybe I can give him a false sense of security. I've dropped a long way back, but I'm coming back into this race. And now we've got a great little battle going on further behind them. Three cars all in a line. That is uh, the fourth position battle, of course. Harrison Newey, Ralph Aaron and Jake Hughes still battling away for fourth position. Keep it together, though, boys. Keep it together. Don't go into the wall now. Some really strong points for all three of you if you keep this going. Harrison Newey in fourth position, Ralph Aaron in fifth, and Jake Hughes in sixth. They'll all be delighted to finish there as the, the time ticks down to zero, and through will come the race leader. About to begin his final lap. Maxi Gunter looks good for the win as he goes past the pits 
as does Lando Norris. But with one lap to go, Maxi Gunter looks like he's going to become the fourth different winner in the Formula 3 European Championship in 2017. We've had uh, three wins from Joel Eriksson, two from Lando Norris, and two from Callum Ellett. Now we're about to get the first win of the season from Maxi Gunter, who has been absolutely blinding in this race. He got a perfect start, textbook getaway, drew up alongside Lando Norris, resisted the pressure and all of the aggro in the first three or four laps from Lando Norris, set about his own task and went, you know what, this is my race, this is my day. I'm going to show you all what I'm made of. I was the runner-up last year, and don't you forget it. Through Park Beaumont, dropping down to the Faux Chicane, keep it together. You can still lose it on the last lap, so don't be too, don't be too pushy. Just keep the car pointed in the right direction, Maxi. You've got this one, my friend. Through the Puissant Chicane. Down the hill. And into the final left-right flick before you can really relax and put your foot flat on the throttle. Maxi Gunter's going to do it. Four different winners from the FIA Formula 3 European Championship this year. And it's a great win. He knows it. Maxi Gunter is delighted with that one. Brilliant victory on the streets of Poe. Lando Norris in second. Callum Illit is third. What a great race from Maxi Gunter. Prima very happy with that, even though Guan Yu Zhou is not. His race ended early, of course, but for Maxi Gunter, great race. And he and Lando Norris, look at that. Great battle earlier on. But Maxi Gunter, yes, yes, yes. Brilliant win. That was textbook. That's probably the best I've ever seen Maxi Gunter race. And I've seen some pretty good races from him in the past. But that was so measured, so controlled. He didn't put a foot wrong in that race. And it was so much pressure as well. Lando Norris was giving him such hassle in the first three laps. But Maxi Gunter is enjoying the moment. And well may you do so, my friend. Absolutely superb drive. One of the best. One of the very, very best. And many drivers through the years, they talk about some incredible days where they've had some amazing races. Maxi Gunter is going to tell his grandkids one day, I won on the streets of Poe. Not many people can say they've done that. But to do so with such style, with such flair, with such maturity. Not bad for a 19-year-old. Maxi Gunter, absolutely brilliant. So Maxi Gunter taking the win. Lando Norris is the leading rookie again. But more importantly for him, with second position, Lando Norris takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Callum Illett in third position behind Maxi Gunter and Lando Norris. That's your podium. Harrison Newey in fourth ahead of Ralph Aaron and Jake Hughes. Nikita Mazepin in seventh position. Ferdinand Habsburg, the birthday boy, comes home with strong points in eighth. Jahan Davarwala is ninth. Jake Dennis gets the final place in the points. Mick Schumacher is 11th from Tadasuke Makino. Petro Pique, David Beckman, and Kevin Andresuri are next with retirements from Mawson, Ericsson, Joe, and Sato. But the big one there is Joel Ericsson, championship leader, out of the race and therefore massive points in the championship lost. That's going to be really, really costly going into the third race of the weekend. But there's one man who's happier than them all at the moment, Maxi Gunter, and he has completely and totally deserved this. What a great result. And an absolutely magnificent drive. It's so easy to get it wrong here on the streets of Poe. And when you've got somebody like Lando Norris, who has no fear at all, pushing your buttons around corners, you wouldn't even consider going side by side on at the casino corner. Maxi just kept to his guns and said, no, I don't care that you're an upstart. I am not letting you through. And he resisted all of the pressure. And he is delighted. The Bremer team absolutely elated for him. He's a wonderful chap as well, Maxi Gunter, an incredible young bloke. He's got an incredible personality. He is Formula One's dream waiting to happen. He could well be the next big German sensation. There's quite a few of those on the way, of course, but Maxi Gunter seems to have the complete package. He's a really good operator. He's an incredibly good analyst. And in terms of uh, Formula One material, he's got the character and the personality that people will fall in love with in the Formula One paddock. Look at that. That's what it means to him. We saw the very measured, very matter-of-fact nature of Joel Eriksson in the victory yesterday. But Maxi Gunter is going to enjoy every second of this. Congratulations from Lando Norris. He takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. 
The rookie still having a fantastic year. Two second places here from Bo. But look, that's what it's done to the championship. He's 10 points clear of Ericsson. Maxi Gunter now moves up to third, ahead of Callum Illett. Mick Schumacher in fifth position from Ferdinand Habsburg. Jahan Davarwala is only one point behind him. Jake Dennis is only one point behind him, with Guan Yuzhou and Ralph Aaron now tied for ninth place. Harrison Newey has 31 points from Nikita Mazepin, with Jake Hughes, Joey Mawson, and Pedro Piquet. What a disappointing season this is turning into for Joey Mawson. Could have been on the podium yesterday, of course, don't forget. So let's look back at the highlights from this second race at the Poe Grand Prix. Lando Norris from pole position, Maxi Gunter alongside him on the front row. But we had no idea what we were in store for. It was going to be a great race right from the off. And that lightning start transformed this entire motor race. Cracking start from Maxi Gunter, surging alongside Lando Norris, squeezing him out to the left-hand side and saying, don't even think about it. But Lando wasn't done. He was prepared to go side by side through the Pont Oscar and through Casino. Little bit of a tussle there between Marino Sato and uh, Kevin Andres. A couple of other incidents through the race. Nothing major until Joel Eriksson went into the barrier. Big points lost, but a victory for Maxi Gunter. Fourth different winner in FIA Formula 3 European Championship this year. And what a worthy winner. So that's your second winner of the weekend then after Joel Eriksson's victory yesterday. Maxi Gunter becomes a first time winner in 2017. And what a sensational race that was. A very good battle. Not a lot in terms of cars bouncing off the barriers, but in terms of the intrigue and drivers pushing each other to their limits, it was very entertaining indeed. Joel Eriksson's car brought in on the back of the flatbed there. And my goodness me, Joel Eriksson has got a lot of work to do ready for the uh, third race of the day then. And of course that one, is the big one. That's the Poe Grand Prix. The winner of race three will win the 76th Grand Prix of Poe. So as we wait for the podium ceremony, it's going to be a really interesting uh, third race, and we have to consider the point that it's going to be Lando Norris on pole position again for that race, and Maxi Gunter basically just has to do exactly what he did in race two in the third and final race. He needs to get a better start than Lando Norris, pull away, and he could win the Beau Grand Prix. But it's uh, very easy to say it just like that. But I don't think it's going to be so easy to actually get the job done. So in terms of the rookie battles, Lando Norris, of course, is the uh, race winner in the rookies. He'll get the rookie trophy as well as the second place overall trophy. It's going to be a fantastic result for uh, Maxi Gunter and the Prima Power team who pick up the uh, team's trophy later on as well. But what a result for Maxi Gunter. He's a very worthy race winner. Some intriguing battles in that second race. It wasn't exactly the uh, carnage fest that we saw from uh, race one. But then it was drier in race two. But the fans, I have to say, are absolutely loving the atmosphere here at the Poe Grand Prix. They stayed last night. Uh, I can verify this. They, most of the fans stayed last night till about 11.45 at night uh, watching the... Uh, formula of the GT4 championship racing and the Clio Cup of France. They absolutely love the motorsport here. Look at Maxi Gunter. <laughs> He's skipping to the podium. Oh, yes. That is what Formula One is going to be looking forward to in the future. What a personality. Maxi Gunter is a lovely, lovely guy. Here's Lando Norris in second place. Yet again, good points bagged and a 10-point lead in the championship. He's just taking it all in at the moment. And in third place... That's better for Callum Illett. He's back to his best again. So the national anthem for Germany for Maxi Gunter in a moment. Callum Illett looks relatively okay with third place. Could have been a win yesterday, of course. But here's the national anthem for Germany.
Very popular victory indeed for Maxi Gunter. He becomes the fourth different winner in the FIA Formula 3 European Championship in 2017. And it may feel like a long time coming after he was the runner-up in last year's championship. But it's a very satisfying victory nonetheless. To give him the trophy for the winner, it is Kevin McLaughlin, the senior vice president of Exploration Total. Magnificent race for Maxi Gunter. Such a mature and composed drive. Magnificent result indeed. And that puts him right back into the hunt for the championship, and he knows it. So to give the Prima Power team the victory trophy for the winning team. Is that the uh, winning team's trophy? That's the second place trophy to Lando Norris, I think. I think that's uh, Josie Poeto, the, de the deputy mayor of the city of Po. Have they given a different trophy to it? I was half expecting that. Uh, uh, I, th I was half expecting that trophy to be given to the winning team, but Josie Poeto obviously gives the second place trophy to uh, Lando Norris. Here is Eric Sabat uh, shaking hands with all of them. He now gives the trophy to uh, Callum Millet, sports event manager of the city of Po. Eric Sabat, another successful weekend. And I think it's going to be Dominique Mukli who gives the uh, team's trophy to uh, the Prima Power team. No, I think uh, we've had uh, Dominic Mockley give a different trophy. I think Dominic Mockley, uh, uh, Dominic Mockley, the chief executive officer of TEGF, has given the wrong trophy out. But never mind, never mind, they all get their trophies regardless. Prima are happy with that. As too is uh, Maxi Gunter, who now gets himself right into the hunt for the Drivers' Championship. Absolutely fantastic result for Maxi Gunter. And now we have a new fight on our hands. It's a four-way fight for the championship with Joel Eriksson licking his wounds in the pits now, hoping that in race three he can put it all back together and be fighting for the podium with these three once again. But Maxi Gunter... Very much delighted with that. Lando Norris has disappeared straight away. He doesn't want to get soaked in champagne yet. He wants to wait for the third race because he intends to be very drenched with champagne on that occasion. But Maxi Gunter and uh, Callum Millet, the two Prima drivers, celebrate their podiums with an absolutely fantastic performance. And it's a 1-3 for Prima in the second race at Poe. But for Maxi Gunter, more importantly, He's now third in the standings, and he's straight back into the fight for the championship after an absolutely superb performance. Two different winners then from Poe so far. Joel Eriksson in race one, Maxi Gunter in race two, but Lando Norris gets another chance for uh, the uh, chance of the victory this time in the third race, and that's the one, of course, that's going to crown us the Poe Grand Prix winner. We get the rookie podium now for our top three rookie drivers. So the drivers will come out to collect their trophies in the uh, rookie standings once again as well. And of course, that man on the top of the podium that time is going to be Lando Norris. And more importantly for him, he now takes a 10-point lead in the Drivers' Championship over Joel Eriksson. And that is the most significant bit of news heading into the third race here at the Po Grand Prix. And I'm just intrigued to see what's going to happen in terms of the tweak of setup from uh, this second race to the third, because clearly there's a couple of drivers who are still on the back foot. But Lando Norris has a re relatively good car underneath him. What he needs to do now is make sure he gets a lightning start. Here's Lando Norris, leading rookie, leading driver in the championship overall. He always takes things so much in his stride, Lando Norris. Second position in the rookie standings, Jahan Dabarwala. Good drive from him. And third position, the man who everybody's come to see, it would seem, Mick Schumacher. Good to see him on the rookie podium. And as a result of the uh, podium rostrum, we get the national anthem of Great Britain for Lando Norris as the leading rookie.
That's the first time all weekend I've known the national anthem go all the way through to its conclusion. Even when the French national anthem was played for the French winners in the support classes, they didn't get through the whole thing, nor with the, the German for Maxi Gunter, nor the Swedish for Joel Eriksson. But uh, that is the first time, I think, all weekend I've heard the national anthem go all, through, all the way through to its conclusion. Milando Norris is the leading rookie. The trophy presented by the deputy mayor of the city of Po, Josie Poito. And a fantastic performance from Lando Norris this weekend. Two second places, two rookie victories. He's still won every rookie race, except for one earlier in the season. Jahan Davrawala, second position, the uh, trophy given by Dominic Mukli of the uh, TSGF. He is the chief executive officer. And Eric Sobat gives out the trophy. Well, I thought Eric Sobat gave out the trophy, but it looks like it's going to be Pascal Breton of uh, Total. He gives the trophies on the podium instead. So a second podium ceremony in about two minutes for Lando Norris, but he leads the championship going into the Po Grand Prix conclusion. Who will put their name on the trophy of the 76th Grand Prix of Po? Will it be Joel Eriksson, Maxi Gunter, or somebody completely different? All eyes on Lando Norris. It could be him.